Right. I uh, Saturday in Texas, and we have uh, actual sunshine, and the snow is melting. And I came to my office to take a shower because I do not have hot water um, at home. So, uh, and I was on Facebook earlier, and I've seen a lot of posts about um, Zillow recently, and Zillow buying showing time, and how we should stop giving them money, and how. Uh, National Association of Realtors really needs to do something and I, I can just tell you that that ship has sailed. Uh, I was on the board of directors in Austin a few years ago and the local associations do not have the stomach to fight Zillow. Uh, the national associations are not organized enough and I just don't think there's proper leadership at the top of the National Association of Realtors. You have to realize that most of the people that uh, volunteer for these positions, which I am grateful that they do, but a lot of them uh, don't do a whole lot of business. They do it as more of a hobby. So um, there, are, that's not exclusively true. I, I want to say that there, there are a lot of people that are at uh, the top of NAR that are volunteers that, that have come from a very successful career. Uh, but by and large, we have a lot of volunteers that that's just an accolade they want to put on their resume. Um, so, you know, what does it mean that Zillow is a brokerage? There's no stopping them now. And I saw a post about ethics violations and, you know, yeah, that might be true. Okay. But they are such a large company and they've grown to be such a, a monetary force in our industry that, that NAR is not going to do anything. The local associations aren't going to do anything. Um, there's no way to reverse it. The ship has sailed. You, and it's same thing with Realtor.com. You know, we don't talk about Realtor.com that much, but, you know, Op City is giving out leads uh, left and right. So what we're seeing in our industry is a diminishing of commissions in a lot of ways. On, on the first way is that um, large corporations like uh, Zillow and Realtor.com and Homelight and all these other ones are, are spending millions and millions of dollars on TV ads so that they can get our potential clients and refer them back to us. And you know what? That's just industry. That's just, you know, business. They, they have every right to do that. Uh, we can bitch about it all we want, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is that it's working for them. So when I look at the future of real estate in the next five, seven years, uh, I see a few things happening. And before I get to that, the other thing that's happening is that as the market gets really hot and you have other these companies like, like Redfin that are offering discounts, it's a supply and demand. I hear people bitching about commissions all the time, right? And, and first of all, you have to be very careful what you talk about commissions because of antitrust. But the fact of the matter is, is it's a competitive market. So if you can demonstrate your value and get a higher commission, then go for it, right? There are a lot of people that don't hire discount agents because they realize that they're gonna get more service, they're gonna get more uh, of a professional uh, way of doing business when it comes to marketing and techniques and all that, okay? So back to the my prediction for the for, for the future of real estate okay five to seven years from now what i think is going to happen is that of all the real estate agents in the country right now there will be 50 percent of them that will either retire or quit uh find another job do something else okay um th this you know as commissions generally get lowered uh, as other companies start to take over, uh, we will probably see uh, Zillow have more boots in the ground. We will probably see Amazon take a uh, act active role in real estate. Um, I think that's going to push out a lot of people out of the industry. And that is what it is, right? There's, there's, that, that's the way the, the business works. So the other 50% of realtors, okay? Um, and I say 50%, I don't know what these ratios are. I'm just kind of making it up, right? But let's say there's 50% left. They're going to be into two different categories. One of those categories is going to be as an employee, 
for Zillow, Redfin, uh, Homelight, uh, you know, whatever corporation is, uh, you know, streamlining real estate. Um, and then the other 25% are those of us that can scale their business or differentiate themselves with so much service that they are a viable option to these corporations. Because some of these corporations are going to do things really right, okay? But there is always room for the little guy to step up. And as an example, what happened to me when three or four years ago, when uh, you know, Compass and EXP and Better Homes and Gardens, they all came into town and said, hey, you know, we're, you know everyone's saying there's disruptors are coming. I don't know if you guys remember that. I don't, I don't hear that word that much anymore, but it was one of these overused words. Disruptors, disruptors are coming in. And they went around and absorbed a lot of brokerages and um, bought them out or offered them some kind of payday. I talked to them, or okay, I talked to two of them, uh, and made the decision that I am going to stick with the course that I'm on, fight through it, and go on a recruitment binge and recruit the best agents that I can and provide the best service and technology and training to those agents, okay? So fast forward three years, what I realize is that these people that have come in and that were somewhat scary in the past were the best thing to ever happen to me, okay? Because I don't have that much competition anymore. Not, not like I used to, now, don't get me wrong. When I say competition, I'm talking about, and we have about 50 agents right now. I don't have that much competition when it comes to the you know 40 to 75 agents. Used to have a bunch, okay? And that's okay. Right, because what I realize is that more than half of my agents were with a, a larger company, or with a, I'm sorry, with, with a smaller boutique company that was absorbed by a larger corporate company, and they just weren't happy there. Okay, they're happy here because they wanted that independent boutique team environment that we provide that they had somewhere else. Okay, so my point is. The innovative and the strong will survive what occurs over the next three to five to seven years. And in speaking of that, it's all about stepping up your game. I see so many agents bitching about what's going on in the market, okay? I, I heard a story the other day about an agent who got 100 offers on uh, a listing and he said it was the worst weekend of his life. That is crazy to me. Okay, because pro promises don't sell home, process does. If you're not prepared to handle 100 offers, then you need to rethink how you're doing business. Okay, as an example, we have a form that agents put in all the fields in them, upload the documents, and those fields for the terms feed into a spreadsheet, okay? You need to have a process for doing stuff or you're gonna go crazy. It's time for us to step up our game and you do that by building systems and processes and, and, and finding innovation in what other people are bitching about. Wherever there's, there's a crisis, there's an opportunity. So um, that's my rant for today. Uh, I'm gonna try and do some more lives here. Uh, if you find any value out of any of the videos, we've been real lax on posting our trainings here, but our podcast, uh, Realty Hack, is on every podcast platform, um, and I'll put a link to our YouTube uh, channel below. All the videos go on there. We've got a lot more than we post on here, but I'm going to try and catch up here. I hope everyone that's in Texas is having a safe um, recovery from this storm. Uh, if you need hot water, let me know. If you're around my office, I can give you access to it and take a hot shower. I just did and it works. So, um, all right guys, have a great day.